All right, what do you guys got? <laughs> what is, is David doing anything much different than what Rick did? Uh, not that jumps out at you, but it's, it's what you would expect him to do. He played uh, for Rick and is there a long time uh, with Rick. Uh, he does believe in playing a full court game. That's what he was as a player. Uh, people don't realize he could really run. I mean, I recruited him and signed him and then left and came here, and he stayed at Kansas one year and left. But uh, uh, they're long and athletic. It's, uh, he had a good team coming back, and he knew that. And he's tried to coach them and give them direction without getting too much in the way and letting them play. Uh, but they're, they're impressive when they get it going. I mean, they really are. I was trying to look and see what the difference in some of their stats were, league and non-league. Yeah, it's pretty impressive when they're shooting a higher percentage in conference play than they are in, <laughs> in overall. So, uh, but uh, I think for the most part, he's, I'm sure he's added some. He probably had some plays when he was a player he really liked for that position. So I assume they do that. And if he didn't like it, I assume they didn't do, don't do those parts. But he's a good kid. He I shouldn't say kid, but I guess I'm old enough to about call anybody kid if I want to. But uh, uh, he's uh, in a basketball family. His dad was a coach. And uh, so I think he's – it's a tough situation. He really he really liked Coach Patino, really had a great relationship with him. And then all of a sudden you're the head coach. And he's got some good guys around him too. I mean, his staff is a good bunch. Coach, with the, you know, some bigs like Mamoui down there, um, you know, how does that present challenges for you? Because I think he leads the ACC in blocks, and they have the ability to protect the rim when you guys want to pound them down low. Well, we haven't been pounding many people down low, so it's uh, uh, it's not going to be anything we haven't seen before. But uh, they're one of the best shot blocking teams in the league. They're long and athletic, and uh, he's certainly, I think, he is leading the league. I think last time I looked, he was leading the league in block shots. But uh, our freshmen, they're not going to just turn around on their tippy toes and shoot it. He'll be batting it up in the 17th row. Uh, but we understand that too, and you just got to go in and play. But it, it's it's a challenge. I'd like to have some of those numbers uh, protecting our rim. Last we saw you, you were worried about Joel and Luke's fatigue and mm -hmm. health. And I'm sure you gave him a couple of days off. How are they? Yeah, How's everybody we, doing? Everybody seems to be doing really well. We gave him Monday and Tuesday off. No, we played Monday. So we gave him Tuesday and Wednesday off. And he came back yesterday and his first day. And, boy, they really looked – but like I had fresh legs, I was almost wishing we hadn't practiced. We should have just saved it and go play the game. <laughs> I was concerned. I did cut it a little bit shorter yesterday because uh, they really did look like they were fresh. It'd be interesting to see what they look like today. But didn't have any problems. Uh, B. Rob and uh, K. J. had a little collision at the end, but uh, we're listing B. Rob is quite limited today. But he could be going full full fledged today too. So you said you wouldn't want, you wouldn't have scheduled the three games in five days the way that they did. But it does seem on this back end, it does give you a little bit smidge extra time. In addition to the mm -hmm. next week, you don't have – you have the one game. Yes. Yeah. You know, I, I go back exactly what you said. I wouldn't have done it because it was pretty hard. I mean, it was hard for me mainly. I was tired. I mean, you know, good gosh. Old, so. Yeah, I'm old. I must be part of it. But uh, uh, I wouldn't have done that. But, yeah, you know, it depends. Some guys say, God, let's keep playing. We're really playing well. Well. That's the reason I don't get too fired up about any part of it. You play the whole schedule. But uh, it, uh, I think it is good to have some rest time at the end of the season. I wish we didn't have three out of our four on the road and the quality of the teams we had. I wish we were playing five of you guys four times. I'd feel a lot better about our success. And you guys may really have game that I just don't know about. No. <laughs> Sneaky. <laughs> now that you've gone through that stretch, though, you kind of look at it and say that was sort of a, a good thing in a way. You got a chance to see how your team would handle something like that. Oh, it was a confidence boost. There's no question. Uh, but again, I'd still say I wouldn't schedule it myself because it was really hard. Uh, but it's the schedule, so shut up and play it kind of thing. But I think it gave us some confidence. Now uh, we haven't beaten Louisville at Louisville, and fortunately, 100 years ago, I had a Kansas team that went in there and beat them. So I may tell them I'm the only guy that's got a victory there. So maybe that'll give them a little more incentive. Mostly talking about um, the chemistry that they kind of felt over those, those three games. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you caught on tape that people like us might miss that was just working a little bit better with Cam in the lineup? 
I do think it was good for the chemistry. You have little challenges and you bond together, and if it goes well, it does give you a little stronger feeling. I believe that. I don't know that I would pick out anything that that I could see that was any different. Uh, uh, we played better offensively. We moved it a little bit better. Uh, we still played the Matador style on the defensive end, but uh, uh, it stopped them enough to win three. Well, along the same lines, Theo and Joel both talked about with it being February, there's should be and there has been more of a sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that? They've brought it up a couple of times. I mean, uh, we only have one more game at home. And uh, they've said something about it and said something about it before the uh, last game. We had only two home games left. So I think when you get to be a senior and you see that stretch run coming, I think it does amp you up a little bit, motivate you a little bit more. And hopefully they'll drag the rest of the guys along with them. But I think uh, at least two occasions I've heard not just Theo. I hear Theo say a lot of things, but I think Theo said it once and Joel said it once too. It appears that Cam has been fully integrated for at least a few games now. Is there a point in the last couple of weeks where, in your eyes, he was fully integrated with those guys? That they had that chemistry you were looking for? Uh, you know, I've really seen it the whole time period for that part of it because he really has. And we move the ball in practice sometimes, and it hits one guy's hand and goes to him, and next time it hits his hand and it goes away. And they, the, yesterday, Kenny missed him on a play, and as soon as it was Cam, my fault, I'm sorry. You know, I think we've had that all along. I think it's Cam himself that has felt a little more comfortable with every game and what we're trying to do, and it's a, it's a different style of play. And, uh, you know, he hasn't shot it as well as I've seen him shoot it. And Joel hasn't shot it as well as I've seen him shoot it. Uh, but when shots go in, uh, the chemistry tends to be a heck of a lot better when that happens too. Did the second half help him in that respect because he was kind of mm -hmm. relied on a lot. To, to yeah, he and Joel there. both. I mean, that's they were our offense. It wasn't a five man. You know, every it was those two guys and everybody else were wondering what was going on. Uh, so I think that gave him some confidence too. But uh, I think he would tell you that he'd like to be more consistent, be shooting a higher percentage. You know, shooting thirty five percent from three. Well, he and Joel, Joel are exactly the same thirty five point three. But you know, Kenny's been making more recently and it seems like a big echo. Is that okay? Can you guys hear it all right? It scares me getting close to the microphone. I haven't been that afraid of a microphone before, but uh, uh, they're shooting 35.3 and we'd like it to be a little bit better than that. Though. The Yager Sports Style report last night that uh, mentioned Hall of Fame coaches and top, coach, or top programs. It's a pretty exclusive group. Um, what does that mean when you hear something like that, just that has been, having been around the game for so long? Got plenty of mixed emotions, you know. It's uh, I feel very comfortable. Let's put that, you know. I'm not phone rings at night. I'm not worrying about that. And I may worry about a lot of other things, but it ain't about that. Uh, but you know, we've had problems forever. You know, I made this statement when it all came out. I mean, I think it's President Roosevelt. They started the NCAA because he was upset about some uh, improprieties going on in football recruiting. And they wanted somebody to be in charge of it. And that was in, I forget now, 1906 or something like that. So in every part of society, there's some things that are a little going wrong. And there's some things that are going very, very well. I tend to look at it like that right there. But uh, when the FBI gets involved, it's, it's a different level. There's no question about that. Steve brought me the article. Uh, one of the articles, and I've got it with me to take and read it on the plane, and he told me what they said. But uh, I've been surprised uh, uh, that it was that uh, involved, and yet I've been surprised that something else hadn't come up uh, and to add to it. Because when you're talking about four guys, we've got 351 programs, and everybody's got four assistants. That's a lot of people, but I would guess that some other things are going to drop at some point. And talk to other guys during the season, but I mean, is there a feeling of dread, or do you guys kind of feel that, as coaches that this is good for the game ultimately, that it's going to clean things up? I don't. I don't have those discussions with other coaches. I really don't. I don't have a lot of discussions with other coaches during the course of the season. Um, talked to Lon Kruger about uh, coaches versus cancer event. Talked to Mark Few about scheduling games. Uh, uh, Izzo and I have texted back and forth a couple of times, different things. Uh, uh, 
talked to Leonard at one point because uh, TV scheduling really puts a lot of stress on players. But I, I, I really don't. It's uh, you're you're aware of what's going on in the world, but you're also more aware of what you may have some control over, and that's what you stay bonded to. Coach, two of your players from the 2009 uh, championship team are playing in China. Mm -hmm. uh, Ty Lawson with the mm -hmm. Shangdong Golden Stars, and Tyler Hanser with the Long Lions. Is it strange that they're not just showing off? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I'm really big hey, on Chinese basketball. But you know, we have no idea if what you're saying is right or not. So, what the hell? <laughs> you know, I could, I could chat. I could challenge and say that's the wrong team. They're with <laughs> something else, but I uh, know. Sorry, is it surprising those two guys? They were the stars of that team, along mm -hmm. with obviously Danny Green and Wayne Ellington. They're not in the league. I know Tyler Lawson might have some, um, you know, coming back questions. Yeah, I've seen his name on the bottom of the ticker. I've spoken to Tyler Hansbro three or four times. He's enjoying himself. He's getting to play a lot of minutes, and he likes that. He likes to play. Uh, if I'm the head coach, I'd have Ty Lawson and Tyler Hansbro on my team for the day I die. You know, because I trust them and believe in them, believe in their ability. Ty had some really good years and had some problems more off the court than anything else uh, that have caused him to be in China. But I'm hopeful that he'll get a chance to get back in the NBA. Uh, he was a phenomenal, phenomenal force for us. I've never had anybody that could do everything is at the level that he could do at the point guard spot. And, Tyler Hansbro was a dominating player in college basketball for us, but that doesn't mean that either one of them transfers to uh, uh, NBA level. I've seen some guys that weren't quite as good at the, end, at the college level that then really blossomed later on. Have you talked to Ty? Did you say you talked to Ty? Not since the summer. Uh, Eric Coots has talked to him, and he's – Ty's Ty. You know, he's just – he could come in right now and act like he'd been with me all day. You mentioned the coaches versus cancer. The commercial, did you have any idea what that commercial was about? I know it's for charity, yeah. but it's hysterical. I haven't even seen it. I really haven't. Okay. Everybody's been telling me that, but yeah. I haven't seen it. Well, it's about calling time out. <laughs> <You're in. laughs> they can't find footage of you calling a timeout. They got everybody oh, else. Did you guys see the, uh, there was a cartoon. Did you guys see that? Shoot. Oh, what was it? I'll get it and bring it back. I've got it laying on my table at the house. It's something about Dad found out that if you saved your time out, she got more time in heaven or something like that. It was a car. I said, all right. Uh, but, no, I haven't seen it. I did participate in it. It was was me. I do as many things as I can for the coaches versus cancer. It's it's uh, Cancer itself is probably my leading cause, what I'd like to help raise money for. Uh, but I haven't seen that commercial, and uh, uh, that is I'd like to see it at that point. I may, One of these days I'm just going to call five timeouts. No, you can't call five. I guess we got four. I think I could call four timeouts in the first four minutes to see what the hell it felt like. There's a, there's a blog Keep out yelling. there, right? There's a blog out there right now that's like has like consecutive minutes that you haven't called one. So is it's, that, it's yeah. 140 minutes and four seconds. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. See, now that's impressive. That Chinese crap. I don't know. If that's, <laughs> I don't know if you were pronouncing those right or not. Come on now. 140 minutes. Which game was it? Pittsburgh uh, first half of the Pittsburgh game at the very end of the first. Oh half. yeah, because we had. Use it, or, use it or lose it, yeah. yeah. Just, you think you can make it the rest of the year without using one? I could. <laughs> if you can make it through the state game without using yeah. it. I mean, I was so mad, it. Dan, I was not going to call time. <laughs> and here one time, uh, we were behind state 10 nothing, and here opened the game with. I, I believe if I'm really right. I'd bet money that we were down 10 nothing. and I didn't call time out. That's what we practice for. I mean, am I going to – to me, it's – well, now it's gotten to be a personal thing. Now I don't go just to tick everybody else off. <laughs> but it is. It's what we practice for, that we should be able to handle those situations. And if I call time out, I'm just going to yell at them. So. Are you friends with Pete Gillen? Yeah. Peter and I were together in uh, uh, World University Games in Sheffield, England. Uh, me and uh, P.J. Carlissimo and Peter and uh, Eddie and uh, we had <laughs> – we had a good time. Carlissimo was crazy. Oh, my God. And we had been friends for a long time. But I said, we need to take a day off. We played 12 – I miss the days now – 12 days at Seton Hall, and then we'd come over here and we'd play. What in the blankety-blank, blank, blankety-blank, blank, blankety-blank, blank, blankety-blank, blank, 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 blank,
And I said, well, we can walk down to the bottom of the hill about 200 yards, get on a train and ride for an hour and get out and walk 300 yards and watch the third round of the British Open at Royal Birthday. He said, I think we need a day off. So that's what we did. I was going to ask you, I've always meant to ask you, are you aware that everyone in the building wants you to call a timeout? Oh, yeah. And everybody in the world, like, following it wants you to call Yeah. So there is some stubbornness there. Oh, yeah. yeah. A lot. <laughs> there were state fans yelling at you to call timeout. Oh, no. I didn't hear that. I don't hear a lot of stuff, but uh, I, that's even better. Because we, we won the game. You know, that's all I'm doing. Your guy scored seven points yeah. in a row after yeah. the run there. I think I really believe that Steve Robinson even wanted me to call a timeout. He, he sort of stood up and sort of walked down there. And, I noticed that. Yeah, so I gave him a look and he went back. I love the fact that when you don't call them, when so many people do and things work out, it's sort of like, see, you know, they work through it and my way kind of worked. Well, I, you know, we've done okay. You know, there's a lot of guys that call a lot of timeouts that probably haven't coached in as many games or won as many games. But uh, I really do think that's what we practice for, that you've got to be able to handle things. I mean, and we work last second situations and need timeouts. And uh, who was it? Somebody oh, it was Brad Fredericks that last year in one of the – NCAA games, I did call a timeout, and then I didn't call a timeout at the end, and Luke made the shot, so I beat everybody up. And I, said, uh, I don't really think of it that much. I just, I coach for the moment, I really do. And uh, timeouts have never been that big a thing with me. There was one more part in that yeah. state game, if we can go back. Okay. They cut it to two, and I didn't even, did you call a play? It didn't look like you actually, the, the shot that Kenny, Kenny made. Kenny made it right on the other side of the three, yeah. three uh, top of the key, yeah. Did you? How does that work? Because again, that's another situation where at least someone would hold up. A, you know, even yeah. Dean, I think, would hold up a finger at that point. Yeah. Um, it's just the way I've always played. I mean. Uh, so Joel calls the play. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we even, we have some plays where the big guys call the play. You know, because we have plays that are set by what you do. We don't call numbers. You just read what your teammate does, and that tells you what play to run. And that when Kenny made. Uh, Three is sort of like uh, here, which game was it? We were struggling, maybe in Duke, when Kenny drove and got the ball in the middle and passed it out to Cam, and Cam made the three. It's, it's just what we do. That was the same play you ran against Notre Dame. That's why I was confused. Is that a little box play that yeah. I was asking Kirk? Yeah. Sometimes, you know, we ran more plays when, I fit, when we had Tyler Hansbrough and Danny Green and those guys because there were certain matchups that I really thought if I can get Tyler the ball, he's going, that guy's not going to be able to handle him or – spread the floor a little bit and Ty's going to drive. Uh, but I, this more information I want to know. I mean, the last uh, game I ever played in high school, uh, we were at Sunday Book, so it's not a, that big a deal. But we were down one and like six seconds to play. And uh, my high school coach called a timeout and told me to take the ball out. And I was supposed to throw it into somebody. And they were throw it, throwing it back to me. And he said, make a play. I said, OK. It didn't bother me. And uh, guy caught, guy caught it and drilled the corner, shot it, missed it. I was ticked. It's been 45 years. Still in there. Yeah. That I, my theory is this kind of gets used against you that you don't put on a show, yeah. you don't call the timeouts, you don't hold up a finger, you don't go through the histrionics of what we think of as a coach. Yeah, I've had people ask me about it a lot. I've even had recruits ask about it. But somebody else just said something about it. So, uh, but. You know, it's. I was pretty comfortable uh, my first year at Kansas, and since then I've really gotten a lot more comfortable <laughs> in doing it the way I want to do it. But again, my biggest thing is uh, that's the way we practice. So when kids do something, uh, they're able to do it because we practice that way. And I mean, Kenny just walked in and the play I told you. I mean, it was the shot that he had it stayed. I didn't stand up and yell, say, run Y 44 X left, uh, you know, we played basketball and Kenny made a big shot. And in the Duke game, Kenny got the ball in the middle and threw it back out to Cam and he made a big shot. But uh, I don't like to dominate things. I like for them to uh, for have the freedom, but it is, it's what we work on all the time. I mean, you can ask Kenny. There's a lot of times I'll say, okay, wait a minute. Was that a good shot? How many of you like that shot? And so if Kenny took it, he better raise his hand because he shot the sucker, <laughs> okay. And but yeah. rebounding, you hear me talk about that all the time. Running, you hear me talk about that all the time. 
but don't surprise your teammate. Get a shot that we all want, and we talk about that every day with everybody. Uh, was it you I said something about last practice, about was that a good shot or was it Cam? Um, you told me I should have taken a shot with him. Yeah. It was somebody shot it, and I said it was only an average shot because of, no. that was you, yeah. I said, guys, what do you think about that shot? Tell me what makes that just an average shot. And I said, because it was Kenny taking it. If it hadn't been Kenny, it would have been a bad shot. But it's average because he makes them, but it wasn't any better than average, so let's get a better than average shot. So that's the thing with me is that I do try to put them in situations where I can give them a little advantage and then let them play. And I feel – I feel how I have just as much control over my club as I do a guy that calls a play every time because we work on talking about it, the quality of the shot. And, uh, you know, defensively we're going to play 99% of the time man-to-man because -man I believe in, you know, the personal challenge of it. But uh, I feel like that I have a great deal of influence. But I do. I want them to play. I'll tell Kenny, just like he said back there, I said, Everybody on the team wanted you to take that shot. Why wouldn't you shoot it? And uh, so as long as you have input. But uh, the other thing is, if it were me up standing and choreographing, I think people think there's something wrong with me. You know, I, the only thing I do is just to try to get them to run. And, uh, yeah, uh, that's a smart thing. Yeah, and that is something that uh, uh, people think I do that maybe – I do it because, by God, we need to stop. <laughs> I mean, that's the reason I do it. And, and I'm a little fired up at that point. Uh, and I've had players tell me that that uh, uh, means to them that this is pretty important. And that's okay, too. But, uh, no, I'm good. Do you warm them up for you, big fella? <laughs> this portion of the coaching clinic is over. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Ten dollars at the door on your way out. Kenny will be better.